Who is your daddy and what does he do? <laughs> Great. What's up, everyone, and welcome to Sunday with Ola Seventy. I know you fucking perverts would, you know, get all giggly about, you know, I'm sort of full 69. Oh. So I'm skipping 69, okay? We're going for 70, okay? If you're wondering where uh, Ola, the drummer, is, well, he took vacation, you know? It's in between. Someone has to take care of the kids. You know, the kids are off from school and uh, the drummer has to do it. Just saying. He's probably at home playing Dark Souls, something like that. You know, that's just how it is sometimes. I'm alone at the office today, which feels really weird. I haven't been alone in a, in a good while, so I, I, I'm not entirely sure what to do. What do you do when you're alone at the office? No, I would never do that, okay? Fucking perverts, man. I hope you guys had a really happy new year. Holy shit, there's a new year happening right now. How about that? Is it good? No? Okay. Let's just continue on. It, it's just what it is, man. Let's just all agree, it is what it is. World is in a shit state, but, you know, we just have to stay positive, okay? Great. Let's head on with some news. First piece of news of this year, hello. That's pretty cool, is that George Corpse Grinder Fisher, you know, the singer of Calum Corpse, he's releasing a solo album. What? I don't know why I would think that he's the last guy to record a, a solo album and release it, but, you know... Good for him, man. Featuring Eric Rutan, the... I mean, look at this. Look at that. That's a stable neck and hair right there. Let's just say that. Uh, okay, it's called Acid Bat. Can we listen? Let's listen. Look at this artwork, man. Yes. That's how you start the new year, man. You know what? This sounds sort of actually like Swedish death metal, just with Corpse Grinder on vocals. It's very melodic, man. The song sounds really cool. I'm actually looking forward to this solo album of his. So that was the first piece of news right there. Second piece of news is that I accept the cookies of this website, okay? The next piece of news that I wanted to talk about is uh, from, uh, what is it, Blabbermouth? John 5. Incredible guitar player doesn't think that the NAMM show will last more than another five years. Now, this is a very, very bold statement, but I think that he's absolutely right about this. Obviously, what has happened uh, in the last two years, they had to cancel the previous NAMM uh, of 2021, and they then they moved the 2022 NAMM from January to uh, June. The thing about NAMM is that you go there, and you meet a lot of people and you shake a lot of people's hands or you, like if you're me I want to do fist bumps because you know I you get sick and ill if you shake you know 100 people's penises and hands so I rather just fist bump if that's okay or elbow bump that's okay I, I like this trend where you don't have to shake hands with people that's I, I'm all for it I'm all for it the thing about NAM is that you meet a lot of people and that's a problem if there's a pandemic happening. So, I, obviously they had to cancel and now I think the one in June is probably in jeopardy unless they can, uh, you know, secure it somehow. I don't know what, uh, how or what. But since they had to cancel NAM this past year, I think that a lot of brands figured out that, hmm, you know, NAM is definitely not necessary anymore. I mean, back in the day it was all about meeting the dealerships and the uh, distributors and finding new people or whatever. But, it, you know, with the internet happening, I mean, you can still do this, all of this, and a lot of people already knew this, but I think <laughs> by canceling last year, that was kind of like the nail in the coffin a little bit. And uh, now that they moved it to June, what, ha what happens to Summer Nam? That's in Nashville. I, I think they canceled that altogether. And 
Music China, which is like the music messe of the Asian countries or like on the Asian side of the world, uh, moves to January. So it's a little weird. They take the spot of a music show in January from Nam, and then we'll see what happens to Nam next year. It, it's it's a little bit weird, but I definitely think that we're gonna see less and less brands on Nam for the coming years. Much like what happened to Frankfurt Music Messe, uh, which was you know in April uh, back in the day, and that died off a couple of years back because you know it's too close to Nam, and you know people just don't need to meet us often anymore. Uh, you know, you get news from emails and whatnot and all that shit. I think this will probably happen to Nam as well, just as John 5 said. Nam today is more for the end consumer. You know, the, 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 uh, it, it's a public event, basically. Initially, it was for distributors and dealers and, uh, you know, brands. It's turned into a music exhibition for artists and, you know, Musicians, basically. Anyone can go there nowadays and it's just something different from what it was before. Why would brands go there now? It costs a lot of money to go there and uh, it costs a shit ton of money to just exhibit there. So uh, why don't you just spend that money into marketing instead? Just saying. Okay, maybe I should read the article and see what it says. I think that personally, NAM has been going around since 1955, but you know what? I don't think NAM's gonna last that much longer, you guys. I know it sounds terrible to say, and not because of coronavirus or anything like that, but I just think it's so expensive to put on for these companies. I really don't think it's gonna hold on much longer. So yes, I was sort of on the same route of thinking uh, as John Five right here, and uh, it's gonna be interesting. You know, I have tickets to go to NAM in uh, uh, June this year, but I'm not even sure I'm going. Or not. We'll just have to see. And just because there's a new year, I mean, you have to kind of wrap up the last year. You know, let's just put that shit in the past, okay? But we can check out the best metal albums of 2021. As per Mel Injection, uh, did people vote or? The votes are in. Okay, so people voted. That's great. Best album of the year, Gojira, 42. Okay, it's a good album. I must agree. Really good. Maybe. You know, because Gojira is one of the bigger albums releasing something this year. Maybe it just became the, the, it's the most popular band, I guess. So maybe because of that, it became the album of the year. It is a good album, though. Just saying. Uh, Mastodon on second place. That I can agree on. Uh, I reviewed the album. It's an excellent album. Holy shit. In the Court of the Dragon by Trivium. I have to check that one out. Luis did a review of that. Arkspire, Bleed the Future. Yes, I can agree. That's a great, sick album. I reviewed it in the last uh, Mel Morning. Between the Bird and Me, okay. I have to check out Between the Bird and Me, man. Camel Corpse, oh shit. Spirit Box, Carcass, Exodus. But, you know, as you scroll down, you see another list. Underneath Best Album of the Year. You have EP of the Year. Huh. Okay, so now we're doing EP of the Year as well. Well, it's understandable. A lot of bands are referring to and, uh, you know, retorting to you doing EPs instead of albums. And that I completely understand. But a whole new category of best EP of the year. I welcome this. I welcome this, actually. Because, I mean, that's just how bands should release music nowadays. I'm a... Don't get me wrong. I love the album format. The whole album is a story. But that's just now how most people listen to music nowadays. So I definitely understand why they're doing EP of the year right here. Lorna Shore and I Return to Nothingness. Won uh, by a lot. Serif on Ghoul, holy shit, I have to listen to that. You know, Serif on Ghoul, holy shit, like one of the old, the old bands on there right now. I didn't know they had a new one. Label of the year, oh, this is just, oh, this is just such a suck up right here. <laughs> Label of the year, what? Like people would care. They, you know, they should have self published <laughs> as a label right here. That should be the winner right here. 99% self published is the best label. Just saying. Are you Come. Come Jay. Shit, I think I need to wrap this up because I think she needs to go and poop. All right, shit. That was the list of the year. What's that? Okay, guitarist of the year. Matt Heafy. Okay, makes sense. Vocalist of the year. Ol o Ole Peters of Arkspire. Okay, cool. Drum of the year. Bard of Leprous. Holy shit. Okay, I love lists, man. It's, it's what... Next piece of news, TC Electronics celebrates the 45th anniversary of its first ever L with the Stereo Course Flanger Gold. Oh my god. They are re-releasing these old, awesome looking, old, really awesome looking pedals. I mean, check this out. And 
I think it's a great trend that TC Electronics are making this pedal again because that means they might be able to make this again. Hello! This is the line driver and booster. This right here is one of the best overdrives or filters, pre-filters that you can get for a metal guitar guy. Please, TC Electronics, please release this pedal again. That would be so awesome. That's coming from uh, Mel Hart. It's a big heart, okay? So I thought this was a pretty cool piece of news right there. Uh, hopefully they'll continue on this route and make more of these. All right, last but not least, let's just do a happy piece of news. It's maybe not news, but it's a pretty fun Dimebag story. Uh, the time where Dimebag Daryl bought Incubus new jeans because he hated their baggy new metal jeans. <laughs> So back in 1999, when Black Sabbath had a tour together with uh, Pantera and Incubus, it seemed that uh, the Pantera dudes did not like the jeans that Incubus were wearing. So it became sort of like a joke, and then one day they came backstage with a, a set of new jeans for the guys, and some shots, of course, because it's Dimebag and Pantera. I thought it was a cool story. Dimebag bought pants for <laughs> Incubus. Positive Ola. There. You won't escape that way. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter what kind of mood you're in, the dog always brings you back in a good mood. Look at this. Hey, Shay. Oh, so happy. I know. I'm at the office today. It's Tuesday after Christmas. On Friday, we have New Year's Eve. And uh, I'm alone here at the office today and uh, I'm not completely sure what I'm gonna do. So it's just me and the dog. Hello dog. I need to go out later, okay? In this room I've been preparing a video for the 5150 Iconic. Look how small it looks in the corner right there. Not sure if it's gonna be this week. I'm gonna record a, a, a demo of that, that amplifier and, and that full half stack right there. Uh, I only made a Willa Chug, which was great, but uh, I'm yet to try out the big ass. And also, right in a second, I'm gonna record a Sunday with Ola that you're watching right now. So I have everything set up right here. I have my Discord friends on the line. They're probably talking about something political, which is not allowed on my Discord, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so I have everything set up for a Sunday with Ola. This is how it looks in the background. I have like uh, my main camera over there, I have a second face camera over there, I have a sliding camera over here, and uh, then I have an angle camera, and that's, you know, spot right there. Currently also preparing to uh, ship back a batch of guitars to these, these Spain warehouse of solar guitars. Hey, have you been drinking that the water? I promise you, my dog is the happiest dog. Look at this dog. Just another calm day, in between day, basically. Oh, what's been? What do I have on my pants that's worth licking? That's what I wonder. Are we gonna record a Sunday with Ola? Should we do that? Should we record? Okay. Sunday with Ola is done. Now I really have to take the dog out for a walk. So we're doing that right now. Oh. It's a beautiful winter day. Hello, Bella. Yo, yo, Dolan. I had the ball. Oh. Come. Yo. Yeah, they do this. Yeah, they do this. Yo. This hill is perfect because if I go upside the hill and throw the ball, she has to run all the way back, which is very, very energy consuming. And see ya. Wee. Yeah, de bro. Yeah, de bro. Duk di she. Yeah, di duk di she. Tama. Vas ego. <laughs> oh, what the hell? 
Oh, she ate something. <laughs> oh no, I, can't, I feel kind of slow after the, you know, the the Christmas weekend, to be honest. It's not going fast. I mean, I did the Sunday with Ola. Check, that's good. You know, I made a song yesterday for the Sunday with Ola. Really productive, good. But right now, I'm like, ugh. I've been sitting a little bit with this uh, new impulse response I made uh, of my RGT. So right now I'm making the clips for it. Sounds pretty f***ing good. Good job, Picks. Now we have a Swallow recorded and an impulse response video done. What else should we do? You might wonder if it's tiresome to hear yourself throughout the day. Well, uh, uh, yes, it is. It is really tiresome. It's pretty annoying. So I'm currently watching Jersey Shore. <laughs> Get a whip, my Discord friends. But some days are just like that, man. It's it's just not really that fast today. Jersey Shore, baby, it's the best. <laughs> Sunday with all the Rift Challenge. You know the Rift Challenge where I check out Sunday with all the Rift Challenge contenders. Past Sunday with Ola 68. Do you remember that? That was two weeks ago. I had some sick drums where I played myself. You made riffs to those drums. Let's check it out. If you have any submissions, please post them on the Sunday with Ola subreddit right here, and I might check them out. And also, I will make a separate video on my second channel where I check out more contributions. So there's, a, you know, I'm gonna check out three today on Sunday with Ola, and then a couple more on my second channel tomorrow. So we're gonna start with this. Cat the Bass. Let's go. Oh shit. Testament, man. Almost. It's not testament, but it sounded a little bit like it, you know, the intro. This, this is what you call drum and bass, right? Because it's drum and bass. Just saying. Awesome! That was Cat, the bass right there. Well done. Next up we have Equilnia. Oh. Wow, that's a very eerie. I like this. He sounds sad. What hurt you, man? What hurt you? Pix, there's a cat over here. Did that? The cat! The cat! In the riff video. Cat in the hand. Come. <laughs> there's a cat in the video. I like cats. I like dogs too. I love my dog. I love dogs. Dude, he has such a good picking technique right there. I'm jealous. She's so very effortless, you know? And the horns, baby. There it is. There it is. All right. Last but not least, we have Santos. That's the kick. Where's the rest? Okay, cool. Sound a little bit like uh, like Metallica there for a minute. I think he's trying to show off all these cool guitars, so that's okay. I do the same, man. Every day, showing off all my cool guitars. There's a lot of angle changing. A little seizure inducing, but great. Well done, man. That was Santos right there. And if you want to see more Sunday with Ola contributions. Check out my video on my second channel tomorrow. You know what? Go. I'll, I'll put a link to my second channel right here. Go subscribe right now. And also click that notification bell. Maybe. That's, uh, you know, the notification bell is sort of annoying. But, you know, just go there. Subscribe. Thank you. And that's it. And that's. <sighs> and that, my friends, was it for Sunday with Ola 70 right there. Maybe you felt like it was a little short. Well, I have to take the dog out for a walk. Look at her. She's she's just laying there waiting. Can you see? You can't see probably. Pixie, but you're that come eat. I think she's afraid of the slider. That's okay. I'm afraid of the slider too. All right, let's end off this video with uh, playing a cool little song or something. I don't know. 
Let's end this Sunday with Ola and start the new year with a cool riff and lick. <laughs> Take a mortal man.